Hello, my name is Quirain, and welcome back to this Bits of Q series on template metaprogramming in C++. Let's get started. In episode 2, we wrote a meta function to check whether a certain type was present in a tuple. We called this function contains type. Today, we will use the verdict templates which we discussed in the previous episode to create our own type list container, as well as a new contains type meta function for this new type. Whereas before, we could use the infrastructure around the standard tuple, and in particular the std tuple element meta function, we will now have to write such utilities ourselves. As usual, we'll be using Compiler Explorer, but if you've been watching the previous episodes of the series, you'll immediately notice that things look quite different. This is because I made some changes based on viewer feedback. First of all, I switched the team to dark mode, and secondly, I zoomed in a lot, making it easier to view these videos on mobile devices with smaller screens. Just like before, we will first create a runtime version of our new contains type function. Then we will translate it to the template metaprogramming equivalent. As our type list will behave much like the standard list, we will use a standard list of strings for our runtime contains function. For our contains function, we want to be able to write something like this. Contains, given a search string, in this case bool, and our list should return either true or false, depending on whether the search string is contained in the list. Just as in episode 2, we will avoid using for loops and while loops in our runtime implementation, as they don't easily translate to metaprogramming. We will instead rely on recursion to go through our list. Our contains function will take two parameters, the string which we are searching for, and the list in which we are searching. First, we will check if our list is empty. If this is the case, then clearly search cannot be in the list and as such we return false. Else, we check if the thing we are searching for is at the front of the list. If so, we return true. If this is not the case, we are going to recurse on the rest of the list. We do this by first popping the front item from the list and then calling contains with the same search string, but this now slightly shorter list. Now that this all compiles, we already see that this works as the output is 1. By enabling the std bool alpha flag, this becomes a bit more readable. Now it just outputs true. Let's also verify it works as expected when searching for something that's not in the list, like this float. And indeed, it correctly outputs false. The first step in translating this runtime function to a contains type meta function is to define our new type list. We will create a variadic template called type list. And this now allows us to create an instance of a type list. For example, this type list of int bool double. Similar to our runterm equivalent, we want to be able to call our meta function contains type with as first argument the thing we are looking for, and as a second argument the type list in which we are looking. To improve readability, we'll use decal type to retrieve the type of our types instance, instead of repeating this complicated type everywhere. As always when you are programming, there are a million different ways to implement such a function. I could write a complicated meta function that immediately implements this contains type behavior, but that would be quite hard and it would result in an ugly function that's difficult to maintain. So instead we will first define some small utilities for a type list that we also relied on in our runtime equivalent. In particular, we want to have a way to check whether our type list is empty, what is at the front of our type list, and we want to be able to manipulate type lists by popping the front type. In other words, we are actually going to start writing our own little template metaprogramming library for working with type lists. We start with our empty meta function. This function will take a single template parameter as input, the list type, and by default it will just inherit from std false type. This means that it will define a boolean member called value with the value of false. Now we define a specialization for our empty function for when it's called with an empty type list. In that case, we inherit from std true type, which defines a true value member. Let me quickly comment out our contains type call so we can get our code to compile again. We can use a static assert to test whether our empty function works as expected. The static assert should pass when checking empty of an empty list colon colon value. And indeed it does, which we can see because everything compiles. 
If I would try this with a list that is not empty, by adding this float, we'll see that the static assert fails, resulting in a compilation error. So it seems that our empty function works correctly. What's next? We have the front function. Here we'll just declare the template and not provide a definition. This will result in a compilation error if, during template instantiation, there is no specialization that matches the input, which is exactly what we want, as we will now define a partial specialization only for the case where input is a type list with at least one element. As template parameters for the specialization, we take the type name T0, representing the first type, and then a variety template parameter, T1 to N, for the other types. We then define the specialization for type lists starting with T0, followed by T1 to N. Remember, a variadic template parameter can also be empty, so this will match any type list with at least one element. We then define the type member alias to be equal to T0. Again, we quickly test the front function using a static assert. We'll assert that the front of a type list of int, bool is the same as the int type. And indeed, everything compiles, which means that static assert passes. Next, you have the pop front function. Just like with front, I only declare the template and do not define it. We again write a partial specialization for type lists with at least one element in them. But now we do something slightly different than the runtime pop front function. Whereas the runtime function modifies the current list, this is of course not possible in a compile time setting, as we cannot modify a type. So our pop front meta function will instead return the new list by defining a type member alias. We define this alias as simply type list containing only t1 to n, which effectively is the same as if we would have popped t0 from our original list. We then static assert that if we pop the front of a type list of int pool float, we get back a type list of pool comma float. And indeed, this all works as expected. So now we have all our facilities in place, but before we start to implement our contains type function, I want to do one more thing. We will define some aliases for these utilities, so we don't have to write colon colon value or colon colon type all the time. First, we create a front T, following the convention of the standard library. And we'll define this as type name front of our list colon colon type. So we can now use this front T to directly get back the type at the front of our list. We do the same thing for our pop front. We create a pop front T, which is an alias, for type name pop front our list colon colon type. And lastly, we create a template variable for our empty meta function. Template variables have been available since C14. We'll define the variable as both static and const expr. And using the standard library convention for the name, we'll call it empty underscore v. Empty v will be the same as empty of our list colon colon value. Now let's get to writing our contains meta function. Similar to our runtime equivalent, it takes two parameters, the type to search for and the list to search in. And just like in episode two, we will just inherit directly from our if meta function. First, if our list is empty, then we want to return false, which in this meta programming world is equivalent to inheriting from std false type. Else, we get another if statement. If our search is at the front of the list, We'll use std as same v here to check if our search type is the same as the type at the front of our list, which we can retrieve using our newly created front t. So this statement is the compile time equivalent of this runtime condition. Then we return true. Else we want to recurse again, and we will recurse by using the same contains type function with the same search type, but as list we'll pop the front of our input list using pop front t. Then we request the type of this if statement and the type of our top level if. Because remember, we're defining a base class here from which we're inheriting, so this has to result in a type. And now we see this familiar type value mismatch error, which as we discussed before, is caused by the fact that we are dealing with a dependent name for the type member of this inner if statement. The name depends on the template parameter, and as such, the compiler can't know whether it's dealing with a value or a type. As the rules state, in such a situation, the compiler will assume it's dealing with a value, 
And since this if requires type name parameters, we get this type value mismatch error. So we need to help the compiler out a bit by adding the type name keyword to make it explicit that this colon colon type is actually a type and not a value. Great, everything compiles and we already see that we're getting a true return. Now let's test if this also works if you try to look for something that's not in the list. And now we get our next error. Invalid use of incomplete type. So what is actually happening here is that we are recursing through this list, popping one type every time we recurse until we either find the element we are looking for, or in this case, we end up with an empty list. At that point, we essentially take the first branch of this if, but the rest of this statement still has to be valid zero plus. Which means that the compiler still tries to check the front T of our list. As we did not define our front T template, but instead only a partial specialization for non-empty lists, we get this error. There are several ways to solve this. We could, for example, add a definition for our front template. Maybe we define a struct representing an invalid value, such as this non-type, and then we return that if front is called on an empty list. We would also have to do something similar for our pop front meta function to make this all compile. But personally, I don't really like the solution. If I accidentally make a mistake in my meta programming, resulting in checking the front of an empty list or popping from an empty list, I would rather see an error pointing out that I did something wrong. So the solution we will choose instead is to simply add a level of indirection to our contains type meta function to prevent the compiler from trying to instantiate front T or pop front T with an empty list. Think of it as factoring out a part of a long function to a smaller function. We will create a new meta function, non-empty contains type, that will only take care of the non-empty case. To implement it, we will simply take this whole if statement and copy it to our non-empty contains type. Now we get an error. Keyword type name not allowed in this context. As I explained before, when inheriting from a dependent name, the compiler already assumes that it is dealing with a type. And as such, using the type name keyword is not allowed here. Now we see that contains type is not declared here. So let's add a forward declaration for contains type. That should be everything we need to make our non-empty contains type valid. So let's finish our contains type by calling the non-empty variant in the else class. And now we see that everything compiles and we get the correct values. I can even call contains type on an empty list and it will return false, just like we want. So this is how you can use indirection to work around the problem where a certain bit of your template code is not valid in every instantiation. Of course, in this case, there's an even simpler solution. We can just throw away this whole empty V and instead use a specialization of the contains type template to create a different implementation for the case that our contains type is called with an empty list. Let's try that. I first change our main contains type function to only handle the case where our type list is non-empty. Then we create a specialization for when we are called with an empty type list. In that case, we can immediately inherit from SSD false type. And again, it all compiles, and as you can see, the output is again correct. That's it for this episode. As always, you can find a link to the code in the description. If you enjoyed the episode and learned something new, make sure to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more. If you have any remarks, suggestions or questions, just leave a comment down below. See you next time.